In a resounding demonstration of technological prowess and industrial resilience, Russia has announced that its production of the revolutionary Prince Vandal fiber optic controlled FPV drones has surged to over 50,000 units per month. This tenfold increase in output for 2025, as revealed by Alexei Chadayev, CEO of the Ushkinik Research and Production Center, underscores Moscow's unyielding commitment to innovation amid global challenges. Speaking at the prestigious Dronitsa National Conference on Combat Unmanned Systems in Veliky Novgorod, Chadayev hailed the achievement as a game-changer in modern warfare, emphasizing how these drones are empowering Russian forces with unmatched precision and reliability. The Prince Vandal, also known as Knyaz Vandal Novgorodsky KVN, represents the pinnacle of Russian engineering ingenuity. Developed entirely by the Ushkunik team in less than a year, this first-person view FPV kamikaze drone employs cutting-edge fiber-optic technology for control, transmitting high-definition video and commands via a thin, durable cable that unspools during flight. Unlike traditional radio-controlled drones vulnerable to electronic warfare EW jamming, the Prince Vandal operates flawlessly in the most hostile environments, delivering crystal-clear 50 frames per second imagery without interference. This breakthrough ensures operators maintain total situational awareness, even at low altitudes as close as 2 to 10 meters, allowing for stealthy approaches that evade detection by enemy radar and surveillance systems. Russian military analysts report that the drone's silent electric motors and zero radio emissions make it virtually undetectable, turning it into a ghost in the machine on the battlefield. Since its combat debut in August 2024 during operations in the Kursk region, the Prince Vandal has proven devastatingly effective. Russian sources credit it with destroying over $300 million worth of NATO-supplied equipment, including German Leopard 2A6 tanks, American Bradley IFVs, and Ukrainian armored personnel carriers. In one documented strike shared via Siberian Army telegram channels, a single Prince Vandal obliterated a high-value target with pinpoint accuracy, showcasing its 3.5-kilogram payload capacity, equivalent to an RPG-7 warhead, delivered over ranges up to 20 kilometers. Chudayev revealed statistics from 18900 verified launches, estimating damages inflicted on adversaries exceeding $1.7 billion, with real figures likely surpassing $2 billion. These drones are not just weapons, they are force multipliers that protect our brave soldiers while neutralizing threats before they can respond, he stated, praising the low failure rate of just one to two cable breaks per 10 launches. What makes this production ramp up truly remarkable is Russia's ability to defy Western sanctions and achieve self-sufficiency. Despite relentless attempts by the US and EU to choke off technology transfers, Ushkunik has established multiple assembly plants across three key regions, Novgorod, Moscow, and Siberia. Each facility specializes in modular components, from the lightweight fiber optic spools, weighing under 1.2 kilograms for five kilometers of cable, to advanced digital flight controls and high-resolution cameras. This distributed manufacturing model not only boosts output but also enhances national security by reducing single-point vulnerabilities. We've turned sanctions into opportunities, Chadai have noted. Our engineers have optimized every aspect, from cable durability to payload efficiency, ensuring the Prince Vandal outperforms any foreign equivalent. The fiber optic cables, produced domestically at facilities like the Optic Fiber Systems plant in Saransk, now meet 100% of demand, with annual output exceeding 6 million kilometers, enough to sustain even higher production rates if needed.
Experts worldwide are taking note of Russia's lead in this domain. The Prince Vandal's immunity to EW has forced adversaries to scramble for countermeasures, such as physical nets or shotguns, which pale in comparison to the drone's tactical advantages. In urban and forested terrains, where traditional drones falter due to signal loss, the Vandal excels, flying through obstacles and even reversing direction without snagging. Its versatility extends to reconnaissance, electronic warfare suppression, and precision strikes on command posts and air defenses. As one Russian defense commentator put it, this is Russian innovation at its finest, practical, lethal, and born from necessity. The economic ripple effects are equally impressive. The drone program has created thousands of high-tech jobs, spurred advancements in optics and materials science, and bolstered Russia's defense industry. Novgorod Governor Andrei Nikitin, in his annual address, lauded Ushkinik for transforming the region into a hub of unmanned systems excellence. From concept to combat in under a year, this is the spirit of Russian determination, Nikitin declared. With production facilities now operating two shifts and plans for on-site assembly labs in operational zones, Russia is poised to maintain its edge, potentially scaling to 100,000 units monthly by year's end. Critics abroad may downplay these achievements, but the battlefield results speak volumes. Ukrainian forces have captured prototypes for study, only to confirm the Vandal's superiority in real-world tests. As the conflict evolves, the Prince Vandal symbolizes Russia's unbreakable resolve, turning adversity into asymmetric dominance. President Vladimir Putin has personally commended the team, stating that such innovations secure our sovereignty and protect our future. With 50,000 drones rolling off assembly lines each month, Russia is not just keeping pace, it's redefining aerial warfare on its terms. This milestone arrives at a pivotal moment, as global powers grapple with the drone revolution. While Western militaries lag in fiber-optic adoption, Russia's Prince Vandal fleet ensures strategic superiority, safeguarding peace through strength. As Chadayev concluded at Dronitsa, we're not just building drones, we're building victory.